You know what team we seldom talk about here on this YouTube channel? The Toronto Maple Leafs. And I say that jokingly because we've been making videos about all their rumors and all their guys that are going to get traded and going to get moved and whether or not their futures actually lie with the Maple Leafs. But one name that has kind of crossed himself off of that list for a while, at least for the next few years, is franchise superstar Austin Matthews. The reason he has crossed himself off is because he had signed an extension, which goes on until 2028, wherein he'll be making the most amount of money out of every NHL player AAV-wise, $13.25 million a year. Now, we're all familiar with Matthews. Last year, in 21-22, or should I say two years ago now, yeah, let's say two years ago, he had the 60-goal year, 100 points, 73 games played. He was phenomenal. Still lost in the first round, though. Last year, he declined in points, only 85 points and 40 goals compared to the 60 goals he had last year, but his team finally made it past the first round. Unfortunately for Matthews, most of his production was in that first round. He didn't really do too much in the second round, but Matthews is still a very good player. However, when it comes to reputation... You might find many NHL fans, online, in general, that will say that Matthews is not necessarily the best player in the league, even though he's making the top amount of money. This is a guy who is normally lumped in with that A regular tier, like if Connor McDavid is S tier, you have all the guys underneath McDavid, and everybody talks about McKinnon, people talk about Dreisaitl, Pasternak, Makar, Matthews, it's an ongoing thing. And so, while establishing that this entire idea is a thing, today what I wanted to do was talk about a Toronto Maple Leafs prospect that is set to making the team this upcoming year. A guy who has a whole bunch of hype surrounding him, based off of his potential, based off of what he had shown last year in the postseason for Toronto, and based off of his NCAA prosperity. Today we are talking about Maple Leafs second round steal in 2021, Matthew Nyes, and a few comments that he had made regarding Austin Matthews and the entire player profile he possesses as a whole. Now for Matthew Nyes, I don't think we've made too many videos going over his story ever since his days as an NCAA guy. Like, we did make a few videos talking about, you know, the one year later, etc, etc. That was all very well received, but it's been two years since the guy has been drafted, and after another stellar campaign with the Minnesota Golden Gophers, wherein he had 42 points in 40 games, he made his Maple Leafs debut at the end of the season, had one point in three regular season games, and then suited up for the Maple Leafs in the postseason. Now, he didn't play all the games in the playoffs, he only had seven. But in that seven-game sample, he had four points. And in fact, if you wanted to look at Big Head Hockey's tweet regarding Matthew Nyes and his first-ever playoff run, take a look at this. Seven games, one goal, three assists, all primary assists, four points, all at 5v5, seven shots, 15 shot attempts, a plus-one takeaway differential, 15 hits, a 59.51 5v5 expected goals for percentage, and he led all rookies in 5v5 points per 60. Unreal production from a 6'3 guy who is at 20 years old and 210 pounds. It does not take a genius to acknowledge just how good Matthew Nyes was analytically in the postseason run. Even some of these numbers in isolation are just really good already. 59.515 v5 expected goals for percentage? That's crazy good. Anything above 50 is already seen as above average. So 59.5, that's very good. It means that when he's on the ice at 5v5, the Toronto Maple Leafs have 6 out of 10 expected goals for in their favor. With this in mind though, talking about how good Matthew Nyes is and talking about his profile as a prospect, he could very well become a middle to top 6 lock in this upcoming season's worth of play. It all depends on where Sheldon Keefe decides to put him. We had ourselves some comments made by Matthew Nyes at the NHL's Upper Deck Rookie Showcase event. They asked him how good of a player Austin Matthews is, and Nye said this. Pretty darn good. He's not just the best goal scorer in the NHL, but he plays defense too. He's kind of the best overall player in the league, in my eyes. And with the McDavid, McKinnon, Dreisaitl, McCarr, Pasternak, Matthews conversation already in full throttle for the past few years, Matthew Nyes goes out there and shares his thoughts which light a fire as to where this conversation could go. Austin Matthews being the best goal scorer in the NHL is already an idea that I think a lot of people were on board with, although that was very much more prevalent last year when the guy had 60 goals in 73 games. 
This previous season, getting 40 goals definitely diminished his reputation as being the quote-unquote best goal scorer in the league. In fact, Matthews was nowhere near the top 10 in 22-23 goal scoring. You had guys like Adrian Kempe, Carter Verhage, Mark Scheifele, Ovechkin, McKinnon all getting more goals, some of these guys doing so in a better goal per game number two. And you also had two 60-goal guys. McDavid had 64, Pasternak had 61, not to mention Dreisaitl, Rontanen, and Point, who all had 50-plus. There was a conversation a year ago that said, yeah, Matthews got 60 goals in 70 games. That is incredible. He is the best goal scorer, but this previous season definitely slowed him down in that respect because of the low shooting percentage he had had to start off the year. But whatever, though. We all kind of recognize that the beginning of last season was a pretty big fluke for Austin Matthews in terms of his goal production, and if you were to project where his points go next year, or this upcoming season, excuse me, it's very easy to say that 60 goals is well within the realm of possibility here. So for Matthew Nyes to go out there and say that Matthews is the best goal scorer, that's not that outrageous of a comment to make. But also saying that he plays defense and that he's kind of the best overall player? Oh boy, they're gonna ruffle some feathers with that, Matthew. Because Austin Matthews isn't really the guy that I think a lot of people would immediately assume when they think, oh yeah, premier two-way forward in the NHL. In fact, there are a lot of players whom you could say are better overall guys than Matthews, and I think the first one that comes to everybody's mind is Nathan McKinnon. Not only is McKinnon a beast in terms of point production and goals, but the guy is also a gamer who works so hard on defense. He is always going, always got a motor running, and his two-way capabilities are more so encapsulated with his effort and presence in the defensive zone, plus his board play as well. When it comes to these defensive guys, two-way capability is usually measured with takeaways and how they're able to influence the opposition in their own zone. Not to mention penalty killing time, etc., etc. I think everybody kind of recognizes the best one in that respect was Patrice Bergeron, but he's no longer playing. But then again, you have to acknowledge that there's also an offensive component that plays into the two-way argument as well. While Patrice Bergeron was definitely the best defensive forward in the game for quite some time, his offense was never really at the top of the league. Sure, it was there, like he would get point season and he would produce like crazy, but it wasn't Connor McDavid number one. It wasn't 100 point caliber. It wasn't in the top 10 of points. And so two-way capability, you have to measure how good a player is at offense versus how good they are at defense and add it together rather than take it away. For Austin Matthews, his goal production is very good, but I don't think many would go out there and say he's an elite defensive guy like Nathan McKinnon is or like Patrice Bergeron is. So as a result, for me personally, I don't really agree with Matthew Nye's assessment, but of course he's going to go out there and gas up his own teammates and say good things about him because of course their teammates. There's nothing wrong with that, it's just the fact that this tweet was published in the way that it was had a lot of people replying and quoting and saying, hey, Matthews wasn't on the penalty kill, Matthews is not as good defensively as, let's say, McKinnon, like, there's a whole bunch of other factors that go into it, but, of course... This is what the media cycle does. A Toronto guy says something good about another Toronto guy, maybe even calls Austin Matthews the best player in the league, and everybody loses their minds. Everybody watches, everybody talks, and I'm making a YouTube video about it because I know this is going to garner a really good discussion in the comments section below. So let me know your thoughts in the comments about this entire Matthews thing. I just kind of realized how unfortunate it is that both of these guys have the same name, Matthew Nyes and Austin Matthews, which kind of made this video a bit difficult to navigate, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section about Matthew Nyes' comments on Austin Matthews, whether or not Matthews is the best player in the league, and magnitudes too. Talk to me about the magnitude of how good Matthews is on offense, how good he is on defense, and how that combines into his overall assessment amongst other players in the league. Drysaddle, McDavid, these guys are probably the best players purely offensively, but defensively, where do their values lie? And how does that reflect in the overall rankings? Who would you have as the best players in the league? Is it just McDavid, followed by McKinnon or Matthews, or do you want to say McCarr is second overall behind McDavid? Also, finally, I mean, let me know your thoughts as well as to how well Matthew Nyes is going to perform this upcoming year. We had talked about his playoff run last season, and it was great, but how exactly does that translate to an 82-game campaign in the NHL in 23-24? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishashros 99, and bye.